so I think these are done, but I just want to run through them one more time before we merge them. Um, so hey, uh, I was having network issues earlier. Sorry about that. Hey, yeah, no worries. Okay. So anything, anything to say on these, or I think they were ready to go, right? Saving and loading, transfer learning, because you had a, there was a few more things that we had to change. So, a second, so. Okay, we got the trainable. It's a cash down rod. So, so, Linking to the RST, what happens when we build the docs with that? Right, so have, so did you test these links, these? Um... Uh, yeah, they work on docs. They do? Okay, great. Um, okay. okay. All right. Okay. Great. Okay. So we've removed we removed the double section there. All right. Um. And then. Okay. okay. Saving and loading. So, did we, all right, so we don't need this comment, do we need this commented line here? Let's see, I think we can take that out, right? Okay, let's take that out. And then we'll uh, yeah, we don't need it. Okay, so let's merge these guys, so, and so we'll stacking. Saving loading models. And then okay. it's probably gonna get mad about all the um, change lock entries. Okay, so This is, oh, god damn it, did I just, no, let's see, all right, no, I was like, did I just merge the one that needs an edit, okay, all right, so then we're good on that, uh, transfer learning, so, then, Um, 
Alright, let's try this again. Transfer learning was um, good, so then we just need to update the change log. Pi widgets timeout. What was it that was requiring the timeout to be long on this? Was it the downloading the data set? Uh, it was uh, the transfer learning models that were taking long uh, uh -huh. in the test book. Okay. And how long did they take? Um, I'm not sure. Oh my god, that is driving me completely insane. What the stupid. Okay, so and these get tested as a part of the main test suite. Okay, well, we'll let it run, and we'll find out how long it takes. Um, yeah, my concern is just that, obviously, if we have stuff that, that, that takes a really long time on the main test suite, we should move it out of the main test suite. Um, or like, you know, somehow segmented like we've done with the other tutorials, um, because that, that it's, it's inconvenient to have to run really long tests with the tests that are not as long. Um, it's nice to be able to run all of the, you know, the majority of the test cases very quickly. Uh, that way you can catch any potential problems iteratively fast. Um, okay, so this is, yeah, this is probably too long. So um, we need to think about moving these out, but we can do that at a different time. So let's see. So how have we done it with the other ones? I think we just want to probably, um, similar to... Um, 
what we have here with the uh, tutorials we probably want to go through and um, uh, leverage the same type of thing we're doing here. Um, so let's see, this is console test. Um, I don't know, some, something, something like what we're doing with tutorials, because those, if, if they're going to be, if it's going to be long running like this, then, um, uh, then it would be nice to not have it, um, be run as default with the rest of the main test suite. So something like how this front console test works. Um, um, All right, so let's see. Uh, we'll just make a note of that. Okay. So tests, uh, notebooks. Um, uh, do not run notebooks. As part of main test suite. Uh, let's then be run similar to console test. Where, uh, So see okay. workflows testing. All right, so yeah, we want to have them run similarly to that. This, this is still not done yet. Um, uh, quick uh, test case iteration is important for a main. Test suite. Okay, yeah, so that takes almost five minutes. So Let's see, let's get this merged. Um, and was this the one? No, okay, so then there was one where we had, what was it? Um, the other one. Where'd that go? Okay, so there's something on this and some of my stacking wasn't there. Or was it the transfer learning we needed to tweak? Okay, we needed to remove a comment at the end of one of them. There we go, and that was in some of us, in some of us stacking. Okay. Um, okay. So let's merge this guy. Let's remove the comment and merge the last guy.
Alright, should these be in a different order here? Let's see, saving loading models, transfer learning. What do you think? Should we put... Is this a, a reasonable order here? So move between models. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, yeah, seems good to me. Is that, was this the order that it was in? Let's see. There was... Because this is U3. So. Alright, so now, it's, now it should be in. The U order that you had. Okay. So... Okay, and then let's grab the comment out of the sky. And it looks like we are good. Okay. Alright, so yeah, so that main test, we, we definitely want to split that out there. Um, or, you know, somehow separate those. We could put them all under their a, a similar CI job. Um, I think that might, um, I think putting them all under one CI job might actually keep things going faster. Um, all right, so rebase. There we go. Sweet. So now we should have all those merged in. Great. Nice job. Thanks for making those tweaks on all those. Uh, we had a, a bunch of little tweaks to make. So, let's see. Thank you. Hey, no, thank you. All right. So, let's see. All right, there we go. We have all three of those merged in. Um, let's see. Okay. <clears throat> uh, then, let's see what it's sort of most. I want to try to go backlog first here. So, um, so, okay, how is this uh, commit message formatting thing going? Had you had, have we touched yes, this actually, Yes, we talked like we would uh, implement two out of, out of five of the enhancement issues. Okay. And I've done that. The coverage also went up by 2%, but then we never looked back. <laughs> it's okay. been a while. Okay, so should we do anything on this right now, or should we just... Leave it for a little uh, longer. As you said, it should be merged, but like there, there's okay. no error right now, and it's working perfectly fine. Okay, great. Uh, the great. Uh, hilarious part is that commit linting fails on this commit link PR. Ah. So, <laughs> because I intentionally made some of those. Yeah, I, yeah. So that you can see like it's working or not. Sounds good. Sounds good. Perfect. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's, let's just double check this because, yeah, this would be great to get in here. So, so isn't this the same as the map function? Or no, this is every function in the list on the same parameter, I see. Yes, yes, actually it forms a pipe, yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 
let's merge this in. Oh, and I see you did the extensions by mock. Okay. Yeah, I patched it and just made a fake version because that great. was giving problems in great, the great. rest of the cases. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see. All right, great. Yeah, let's do this. Let's merge this through. Uh, I think this will help us. Great. Thank you. So let's see. And will it let us do that right now? Okay, blah, 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 conflicts. Now, I wonder what will happen if it's run on master. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. You go over to pin devs. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah, that pin touch thing was not a good idea. Um, let's see. So, what happened here? What did that happen to you? I just rebased it like an hour ago. How it could oh, yeah. have issues? I don't know. Uh, let's see. It looks like. You didn't push it, maybe? Maybe, right? I, I don't know. Yeah, that's okay. Let's let's we'll we'll take it out in, one, in a minute. If if you push it and it's good, then we can just do it. So, uh, the log time stuff. Should we take a look at that or? Yes, that was waiting on test doc strings, and now test doc strings are working. Yeah, so, right, great. Sweet. Oh my gosh, GitHub Actions. Come on. Where did... It's the world's tiniest scroll bar. All right. There we go. So, TensorFlow. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. I think we're good then. Yes, oh, and this should be. Oh, I think this guy closed his person. So, how, how come lint commit is showing uh, problems in merge because it is not showing the same on my side? It's showing like this branch has no conflicts. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, because I have the rebase and merge button checked, maybe. Um. I've noticed that if you do, because if it's here, then it'll let you do it. Okay. So let's see. 60 commits from this branch. Is that correct? Let's see. Yeah, I think because you'd merged in master a bunch of times. Yeah. Okay. There should be a lot of commits. So, okay. So what is going on here then? Ah, okay. And that's why, because I went in and I rebased it. Okay, so let's see. We just want to do a squash and merge. Is there an issue for this? No, no, yes, there is. 1040. All right, great. So hopefully this does the right thing. Let me squash a merge here. All right, let's 
sí. Great. Did do the right thing. All right. Sweet. Okay, and then log time. Did we just merge this or not? Let's see. Wait, we were going to merge this, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll hit merge on this. Wasn't there an issue for this? Let's see, fix this. Yes, 1088. So now let's refresh this page to see what we got here. So, um, da, 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 da. okay. So, what is next? So, so let's take a look at these data cleanup operations. So, what's going on here? So in that file, uh, those are actually the cleanup operations. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And your uh, tests are also there for it. Okay. All right. Let's see. So, and it looks like these depend on scikit. Yes. Okay. Okay, so do you have plans to uh, show these in a tutorial or something? Uh, yes, we have like data sets on which I want to use. Okay, okay, great, great. Yeah. Um, all right, okay, so let's just do, so I think I updated the scale stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and let's see what happens here. GHPR, okay. I want to see what happens when we do this. So, so I updated the scale stuff recently. Um, okay. Uh, um, let's see. Where was it? Let's see. Where did that go? Maybe I didn't. I swear I did something to scale recently. Oh, yeah. Okay. So where's entry point? Yeah. So entry points goes in to set up config stuff. Okay. Yeah. What? Wait a minute. There should be one more change there. Scale common. There we go. Okay. Um. So we should try to default service dev create operations, and then this was DFML operations cleanup or data operations data. Okay. Yep, so data is like a new package. Great. Okay. So then. 
operations data. Okay, and then we want the tests. And what else do we have here? So, team separation for data cleanup. Did I move this to an RST? No, I did not. Okay, yeah, that needs to happen still too. So, okay, so yes, yeah, so I've got this. Okay, we'll move this over to set up. Okay, so we had the entry points. Okay. And scikit-learn, so set up config. So is this one, I mean, this looks good to me. So, although there's a few, okay, so I guess, let's see, yeah, ideally we use the top level run, but it's not a big deal. Um, it's the test, so it doesn't really matter. Um, let's see. Git single. We're using git single. Let's see. Da, da, da. So do any of these operate? Uh, let's see. Okay. So da, da, da. So none of these, let's see, categories. Okay, so you're planning on, you're planning on making the data flows to go through. We talked about how you might have to iterate over data sets twice to, to find out all the things, right? So uh, like to find out all the categories and stuff, right? So that's what you're planning on doing here, it looks like, is that correct? You, that's going to be in the data flow side of things when you're passing. Uh, yes. You're getting categories. Okay. Yeah. Categories. Categories. Okay. Okay. All right. So, test, test operations. So, uh, right. one thing I had to ask for these data cleanup operations mm -hmm. is that uh, the data which I'm expecting is uh, in the cleanup operations is in the form of a matrix, like list of lists it is expecting. So will that be fine with the data flow? I mean, because in the data I flow, think... it flows in the form of records, right? Like, yeah, like, I mean, I think, I think that that this is, yeah, this is, I think that this is sort of why it's important to have the use cases along with it, right, to make sure that you, you, you implement them in a way that makes sense. I mean, you can always go tweak them, but um, yeah, I mean, let's see, so, because you're just going to end up changing them right away if that is the case. So, input yeah. data, some computer inputs data. Let's see. So, can't we, like, handle... Uh, matrix data like Cluon TS does. Uh, can you say that again? Like, like Cluon TS handles matrix data in dictionary format. In dictionary format? Yes. I mean, you. So that would that might fit in with our records. Yeah, I don't think I. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I'm not able to visualize what you're talking about here, but I mean, that sounds fun. I mean, converting things to a dictionary, dictionary is fine. Um, I think, yeah, that's pretty much what we are doing, right? Um, like most other places is we usually are putting things into that features dictionary. So, um, 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah, everything being a list definitely does not seem like it seems like you're going to need another layer of indirection there. Um, yep. So, yeah, so I was actually thinking like maybe I can uh, come like take one of the data sets and uh, make an example out of it and see if things are working or not. Yeah. And I then would, we can like merge this one. Yeah, I would maybe do that as a part of this PR here. Yeah. Because that seems, yeah, it seems like, I mean, you could always, yeah, you may end up just throwing a little helper function in front of all of the usages of data, right? Yeah. Or you okay. may end up doing it as a separate operation. I don't know. Um, but yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Yeah. All right. Cool. Perfect. Um, let's do that. Yeah. So we'll just make a note that we're going to. Um, okay, no, I just want to do this. Okay. okay, so what happened? Modified new file. Okay, I see what happened here. Okay, so the version should be gone. Okay. I'm just Okay, all right, what is going on here? Okay, so if you could do, if you could do what, I just wanted to see how, what, what kind of issues that creates, but it looks like we have some things that we have to deal with here. So, but if you could go through and, and maybe I'll just post the diff of this or something, but let's see, because it should be, we wanna, if this is gonna be a separate package, then yeah. we want to, let's do the recreation from scale again. Because um, I think that it's scale, the scale stuff has changed since the last time. Um, um, how do I get out of this? Where's that? Um, so let's just do that and then let's include an example. So. Okay, so 11.49. So uh, let's um, rerun skill creation. Um, or package creation. Um, and then let's uh, um, include an example. Uh, with one of these, uh, or with, or yeah. Okay, <clears throat> uh, let's use at least one of the operations. Let's use like two at the same time, uh, two operations. Um, anything else on that one? Uh, no, that was that. I also had like another PR uh, of the SK Learn scorer. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, that's right. And I think we have to change the base branch on that. All right. Uh, All 
Okay. Uh, okay. Um, da, da, da. Okay. Yeah, I also added like the documentation. Oh, like, sweet. That matrix thing. Great. Um, fantastic. Oh, this will be great. Okay, so. And it's the base branch. Yes. Perfect. Yep. All right. So I could score. Accuracy contact score. Okay, sweet. Because I'm config for scores where when running to. Yeah, like this looks familiar. Uh, okay, let's see. Yep, you have already like reviewed it previously. Okay, yeah, this looks uh, <laughs> this looks familiar. Okay, so yeah, we were doing this whole thing. Property to remove. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. All right. Sweet. Then here's the test. We got the test now. I remember reviewing this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, from the test. Yeah. Sweet. No way. Okay. And this is all done. Awesome. All right. Um, well, this is fantastic. Okay. So then, yeah, we don't need to change log really, I think, because, uh, we already said that we're adding accuracy stuff in the change log since last release. So um, let's see. So lint on docs is failing. What's up with that? Um, none type has no attribute split. Okay. All right. So, okay. So that's an issue then. Um, Let's see, and this is probably going to trigger anywhere so I could just load it, yeah. Yeah, so it looks like one of these guys does not have a doc string. Okay, so in 102. 102. Yeah, okay, so basically it looks like some one of these things does not have a doc string, which is weird. Um, hmm. Yeah, okay, we have to fix that. Um, okay, I'll have a look at it. Yeah, yeah, okay, so from CI logs. What do we need to do when we find that um, uh, one of them does not have any doctrine? So, um, see if inspect um, config, or let's see. Let's see, numpy doctrine args. Let's see, so. All right, so see if, I would say, okay, so check if make config inspect works um, uh, in this case we don't or we wouldn't have to or let's see um, okay so let me think about this a little more 
So we created the properties, then we create the data class, and that way, while well, we're doing that, I think there's some. Oh, because we could then remove the missing ones. Um, oh, I see what what is make config inspect? Where is that? So if we were to look at make config inspect, does it have a similar pattern? Okay, inspect params, great. Okay. Did we just change this? Was there a bug in this a long time? Okay, now there was that that thing with the numpy and why is this? And then the numpy one was that Didn't we just have, or am I not on that PR? Yeah, I'm not on that PR. Okay, because we had a change to make config numpy, didn't we? Somewhere. No. I thought we did. I thought we had a change to make config numpy to do something with that properties. Maybe not. Oh, yeah, we didn't do it because then we just pulled out the numpy to extreme networks. Okay, so. <clears throat> Okay, because yeah, if it doesn't have a doc string, why does it not have a doc string? So one of these, one of these scores does not have a doc string. Um, so um. Could you use, so the thing is like, okay, yeah, if we can use make config inspect, uh, then we can skip this. I think there should be a way to, let's see. Okay, now they don't have the type hints on them. So, yeah, okay, in this case, let's see. I wonder how many trigger an error. Um, well, second error. So this is PR eleven All right. Okay, so yeah, let's run this and see what the hell happens here. So if all we have to do to trigger this is import scikit. So. So we'll import it and we'll see the blow up. Right? Wait, what the hell? Oh, double quotes. Okay, it doesn't blow up now. That's even more concerning. Um, And this would be in second scores. Okay, shouldn't it blow up right here? That was really the question. Yeah. 
Yes. Okay. So somehow the CI says that there's no doc string for a certain model. Um, okay. Doc string args for line and doc string. So somebody theoretically does not have a doc string. So no production docs. Get doc class. Well, they all have a doc string over here, so that is odd. Um, so something in the... Oh, why are you coming through twice? Let's see. No, okay, these are just different. Okay, it's fine. Um, okay, now that's... Um, Psychic models versus accuracy scores. So, all right, so something diversion, okay. So, when we run it against the CI, it claims that there is no doc string for one of those classes. So, that's odd. Okay. Okay. I wonder why. Um, that's weird. Okay, is this this is just in the no? It's not just in the container. But it doesn't trigger on model scikit. Now that's even more interesting. Um, what the hell? That's really weird. Okay. So, okay, and great. So the scores are being tested, um, which means that they're all loading fine. So something more interesting is wrong. Um, so what's the difference here? So basically it's failing on the main ones. So docs, container, and test. So there's something happening with the way Scikit is being installed. Is that correct? Yeah, something. Oh, oh. It's probably because of the Dalphrapi stuff. I wonder if that wraps the... Aha. Uh -huh. I wonder if this is what's going on. If the Delphi Pi stuff messes with the doc strings of the um, of the scikit uh, accuracy stuff. So. Hmm. Well, then they need to fix that. So, let's see. We can probably hack fix it, but... All right, so... <clears throat> let's see. We can try doing this stuff and then, you know, kill two birds with one stone here. So, um... Config numpy. Make the text streamers. All right, yeah, my guess is that the Dal for Pi stuff is screwing it up. Um, so we could let's what let's see what happens if we do this. The tests are 
actually passing? Uh, for the main the package itself. Like for what do yeah, you Yeah, like I ran the test in my own system for mm -hmm. these test scores. They are actually running from Yeah. I think what happens is that these um the way that they've done the Delphi Pi um patching. because um, if you do let's see, I mean we can check it out, but um so if you do funk tools wraps, I don't know if it preserves the doc string and stuff like that. So this is the different ways to decorate functions. Um, it's, they don't preserve doc strings and things like that. Um, and I think that's probably what's going on. We should probably keep that in mind too, as we wrap stuff. Um, Cause this is how you end up losing information. Um, so for example, um, or let's see. Uh, well, okay. Mm, let's, okay, let's do this first and then, okay, so if we do, okay, yeah, see, now it's broken. Okay, so something with Dell, I think it's the Dell for Pi stuff, because I updated about Dell for Pi, and now it's broken. There we go. Um, so yeah, they they have incorrectly wrapped something. Um, so well, incorrectly, well, not not completely. So non type ob object has no attributes split. So yeah, my guess is if we look at these things, we will find that um, model scikit they have been wrapped. Scikit scores. So yeah, we'll probably find that this has been wrapped. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, indeed, it has been wrapped. So... Um, Yeah, there we go. So there's the original function. So, or the original doc string. So, let's see. <clears throat> I wonder... Um, okay. So we can just add a quick fix for this. Because um, then we need to go report this somehow. Yeah, now I'm also getting error. Yeah. After like installing the alpha pi and then running the tests, it also shows the same error. Yeah, okay, so now we've confirmed that. All right, so fix for alpha pi. Um, wrapping function. Yeah, because it looks like their, their message they've been dumping to the console has changed recently, and, and they probably have updated things to wrap in a different way. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, fix it all. Wrapping, not preserving. String. Okay, um, this happens when a decorator is used to. <clears throat> Okay, so where is Delphi Pi? Let's see if they are indeed doing what I think what they're doing. Mapping. 
and do patch enable hmm let's see well they're just straight up replacing it it looks like with a different function um hmm interesting and i wonder let's see Let's take a look at that. And are they different positional? Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Well, I'm not, okay, these are actually classifiers themselves, not the accuracy. Okay, well, they're probably, we don't have to go too deep into it, but I'm just curious, for the curiosity's sake of if you guys run into this again, making sure that you know that this is what's going on. Um, so, but you can probably, we can probably safely assume that this is what happened. Um, so, so if has had to method wrapped, um, then... What did we just do? I thought we just figured this out. Wrapped. Did I spell wrapped wrong? So if has at her method wrapped okay so maybe it's uh, only in the text What the hell? All right, it has that to method detect and wrapped in method detect. What the hell? Well, let's just print. Maybe there's another case that we're not handling here. Okay, not wrapped. Yeah, okay, all of a sudden we've got this Dell thing. Wow, they really uh, <clears throat> made this more difficult. Okay, so, um, not wrapped. Man, this did not have to be this hard. Um, okay, what do we got here? Well, no information. Great. Um, okay, so t where are we here? So, shouldn't we be getting, okay, so wrapped, not wrapped, top K accuracy score.
So what have you what have what have you done to this poor top K accuracy score Doffer Pi? Um not wrapped. Properties apply to extra yards. So, okay, so it says it's coming right from Psychic. I think we need to make changes in the model part, right? Well, because scorer part, is there like problem with the scorer part? Well, yeah, I mean, this is so we're in the scores, right? And we're trying to grab the doc string from the score, right? Um, and it's saying that there is no... Uh, such doc string. So top K accuracy score, it's saying, it's saying top K accuracy score is not wrapped. It tries to grab the, it's about to try to grab the doc string from it. Or let's see, actually, let's let's confirm that it does. Doc string works. Okay, now this one works. All right, so my bad. All right, so now we go. Okay, so now we run into this Dell. Rock X score. So this it's it's a Dow for Pi thing again. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, okay, so because yeah, so we're we're going through this. So we're going through the loop, right? That that you have to to enumerate all of the different accuracy yeah. scores, um, and it's come across um, it's come across you know one of them that that has been patched by Delphi Pi and this uh, rock. Let's see, what is this? Rock uh, rock X score. Um, and Dalfa Pi has changed this into this um, one that's present in its own library. Um, so Dalfa Pi, um, yes. it looks like it has put it here, um, and they have not. Let's see. Where's rock? So, um, okay, Dal rock. Okay, and they don't have a doc string on it. So, so they replaced it and they didn't preserve the doc string. Um, thanks, guys. All right. Um, so let's see. What should we do here? So, let's maybe. Okay, if I continue, I won't just break out of this loop. Um, okay. Wow. Um, Scikit learn. Okay. What do we do here? So, this thing, the, ultimately, we really need this to. Okay, I wonder if we can do this. So we could just, we can do it at this level and we can say, um, so this is the original, you know, scikit-learn metrics ranking rock X score as multi-class rock X score. So ideally what they would do is they would just, you know, um, um, I think, I think that something like this works. Um, if we just say, um, you know, if you take if you take a function and you say, okay, the doc string equals the doc string of this other function. Um, now that that hopefully will solve the problem, um, but we'll see here. So, okay, so that top k. Okay, so now we got this rock. Okay, parameter not a doc string max fpr. Okay, so um, 
well, okay. So now we were able to successfully get the dock string attached. Um, but it looks like they have added another parameter <laughs> to the dock string. Um, so um, what is this max FPR here? So parameter not in dock string. Um, perimeter not in dock string. Okay, so basically, uh, what the hell, guys? What are they doing? Okay, um, we can create like an alternate mapping. You know, if we don't, if we, if if there's some of these things that that, um, you know, that only exist. Okay. Why are you adding different things? Tell us what they mean. Um, Oh my god. Ah. Okay, so where's GitHub? So okay, they changed the name. Okay, I now understand. So What is this max FPR? Sources algorithms. Parameters mac, max FPR and multi-class are not supported. Then why are they here and why do they exist? Um, okay. So I guess the question is, is this rock score does this max of PR exist here because um, okay max of PR so it does exist and it does exist in the doc string and it does exist it exists in the doc string and it exists in the arguments so parameter not in doc string so all right well I think we're pretty close here um, all right so what else do we have to cover today because um, I think I think we're close but let's make sure we get everything so um, support for multi output so archive storage models okay let's see if I, I have just worked uh, uh, the changes which I've made in the model base class, so I would just need some input on like how I'm using the data flows and what we need to change. Also. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, let's see. All right, let's just see. Okay, and then all right, okay, uh, that's, this should be quick here, so, and then, um, so the use case and stuff from multi-output, okay, so there's a lot to review here. Okay, oh, no, it's because you've added a use case, that's why there's so many more lines. Okay. Yeah, um, I also made some changes to the structure we discussed, uh, I'm not uh, doing the entry point thing anymore. Uh, I want to fix that as well. Okay. Okay, it looks like we've got a lot of ones. Okay, it's in progress. Um, okay, features. Second multi output. Okay. And what feedback do you need on this right now? Do you need any feedback on it right now, or? 
Yeah, so uh, basically uh, we agreed upon uh, creating different entry points for different multi auto models, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but then uh, I was looking uh, into the models and uh, it seemed like, uh, you know, adding an unnecessary layer uh, to the whole structure. Mm -hmm. So uh, I decided to uh, go with, with just uh, using the wrappers for uh, either case for uh, regression or classification. Yeah. And uh, this way, uh, we are able to support all the models uh, for uh, multi-output and uh, you don't have to, you know, worry about uh, if uh, a specific entry point supports multi-output or not. And uh, there are different types of uh, multi-output like uh, binary and uh, multi-labels and all that. You don't have Great. to care about that. We just kind of pass that on to the multi-output uh, wrapper and it does its work great all right so let's make sure let's see i think that that my comment here then is let's make sure that we've tested those different modes within the main scikit test suite um so let's let's just make sure that we we test multi-output for each model if we say that it wraps each model um and let's test the various different modes as well um, where appropriate so <laughs> Does that sound good? Uh, yeah, I, I also wanted you to just, you know, take a rough look at psychic base. Mm -hmm. You don't have to review it in detail, but uh, just like if I'm on the right track. Yeah, I mean, from what I see here, let's see, so. Because uh, like we discussed, uh, two weeks ago, I'm uh, not having uh, a separate class for multi-output. Uh, yeah, I think that greatly simplifies it, yeah. Like, yeah, predict data. data feature self predictions. And self predictions is just set to, yeah, yeah, single value. Otherwise, it's set to multiple. OK, great. Um, That looks good. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, it looks good to me. Let's see. Um, other other than that, uh, there's uh, the scorer thing that I have to figure out for multi output. I figured it out for. Uh, before the rebase, and uh, now I'm just, uh, you know, uh, taking the mean of all the uh, accuracies of predictions uh, through the score. Uh, but I'm not sure about that. Okay. If that's the right way. And we have Are you another in the example for the or... score as well. Yeah, I would say, I mean, this seems like the type of thing where we might want to get these scikit scores merged first. Um, because, yeah. yeah, just having MSE for everything is not, <laughs> it's not the best. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that we have different different options here so that you can preserve, you know, some of the stuff that you, you might have been intending to do, right? Um, so, because then switching yeah. switching everything to a different mode of accuracy assessment is definitely going to be different, right? So, um all right, so I think this all looks good to me. Let's see, target, D-type, parent config, predict, D-type. OK. OK, let's see, record, predict. So this looks like you're not setting all of the predictions though. So it looks like. Uh, actually the target here is uh, an array. Okay. And uh, I changed it in uh, the records. Oh, you to, changed uh, it? Support, to support, yeah, to support an array. 
Okay. Um. Uh, there's a lot of redundancy, though. Yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, I think that it makes sense for me an ease of use perspective, but I think introducing, you know, the more times you overload arguments, the more times things can get confusing. Um, so, because you basically just move this loop into here rather than moving the loop to the level to the caller, you know. Yeah. And we don't have the same functionality for the way that we set features. Um, so that leads to an inconsistency. I would say we should move it out unless anybody else feels strongly that it should be in here. I'm definitely, I think, you know, I'm open to it being in here, but I also think that, um, that uh, the can behavior you, needs can to be. Can you explain specific. move it out how? Uh, I mean, Where? all you've really done here is, is take this for loop, right, and put it within uh, the predictive method, right? If you moved the for loop to, um, if you move the for loop. Records? Yeah, if you move the for loop uh, to right here, it would be the same functionality, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would move the for loop out here. So. Okay. Uh, and record. Um, Um, uh, wouldn't it uh, make it a separate prediction in that case? I mean, yes, right? Because each each feature that you predict, or each feature that you predicted on, would be saved as a separate prediction, right? Because you did so for um, like if you pass in multiple features, so you've had because because in this case, uh, we want to pass. Uh, uh, we want to pass the whole uh, list of uh, predictions, right? Well, I mean, I guess it depends how we want this to work. But right now, right now, if you use a model and you ask for it to make a prediction, it'll set the feature name that you want to predict in the record to, you know, contain that that value and that confidence for that prediction. Right, and so if you if you predicted multiple things, or let's see. I mean, what you have, yeah, what you have here does the same thing, right? It goes through and it says there's multiple predictions and they're all of this value with this confidence, right? Yeah. Uh, it's it should be the same thing, right? Okay. It's really just moving this loop out. Um, All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so then we'll wait for the scores here, and hopefully we can wrap these scores up. Um, okay, so then, okay, and then this data flow stuff, so hopefully we can get this. Okay, so, okay, yeah, we talked about how we're going to take the, um, yeah, we're going to set location as a separate property. Awesome. Okay, so temp to get directory. Let's get directory. Get directory. So if we don't have a temporary directory, make a temporary directory. Okay. So. Okay. Okay, so 
one thing. Let's see one thing. So create the tempter. And then. Okay, so let's just make sure that we delete the tempter in the event that for some reason location is no longer a file. Remove the tempter if we created it, even if location is no longer a file. Okay. But uh, the temporary directory is created only when location is a file, right? But if it's not a file when we exit the usage of the model, then we won't uh, remember to free the tempter. Okay. okay. So just in case, because yeah. there's that possibility. So we've had the equals location. Perfect. Very nice. All right. Let's see, so run operation archive. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so I think one, let, let's take a look at how this works right now first. So, so extract. Right. If Okay, and I think, let's see, I think that we said, let's see, so compression op, action, seed. Okay, so I think we said that the, the zip and tar are operations right now already, like tar already sports compression. Um, so I think we're going to leave off the compression operations from these data flows yes, for yes, now. The, 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 right. the thing is that, like, uh, if I want to create a tar or GZ, I need to pass the uh, so uh, if you want to option, compress. which is not really right, right now. Uh, so, so to just make it uniform, I made both of the like open uh, extract and archive both as uh, data flows, but it could happen in in simply. Okay, so you so so just to to so for. To clarify again, so you're saying that on the creation, if it's on the creation, you'll need the compression on the if if it yeah right on the creation you need the compression, but on the okay wait extract I don't need compression okay. it can be done you don't need it but you you've included it for symmetry okay yes all right um exactly. great so da, 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 da. okay. So, so I would think of putting it in a more uh, concise form. Like right now, it's looking too yeah, it's verbose. pretty verbose. Yeah, let's see. So, so I would try to just cut the duplication somehow, uh, just find some way to it. Yeah, I think uh, the first thing that comes to mind here is, let's see, so, else, else, okay, we have two else statements, so one of these does nothing. So, let's see, if action equals, equals extract, okay, so if compression up. So, in what case, Get operations action. So get operation will return a none in place of compression op if it is not a tar file and or it is, it doesn't have a, a compression if, if it is a plain tar file transparent tar. Okay. So Okay. Hmm. Ta -ta 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 -ta. So Get operations. Compressions. G zip. All right. So I think I think hmm. 
I don't think we should include the compression stuff in this because the goal so so let's let me just say so the next thing that I was going to say is that I think what we should do here is have um, so remember we talked about we'll have the location property and then we'll create a data flow for extraction and we'll create a data flow for archiving right and so that's what you've done right but but to some extent we want to we want to tweak it a little bit and we want to have a, two more properties um, one that would be like you know location um, save and, and location load um, and those would be data flows and, and their default value would be none and if their default or and if they are none and location is file then we create the data flow and we run the data flow um, if they are not none then we run the data flow and we pass the temporary directory and, and the location to the data flow um, so does that have any questions on that no no okay it's just like i'm taking a note of it okay cool yeah and that's just a slight tweak to what you have here um mm -hmm. okay. Uh, so yeah, so basically add two more properties, right? Um, and you know, data flow, data type, and default none. If if it is none, and the location is so file. So it's going to go into the model config. Uh, yes, the model config. Yeah. So can we add like a, a, a note there so that I can just remember? Yeah. So let's do. So uh, let's add two. Properties to the model config. Um, and we should check so um, okay so let's check for them in the same way we um, check for where is this okay yeah uh, in the same way we check for the existence of location. Uh, location. Don't assume that a model uh, config has a location property. Uh, don't assume that it has save location. Save. Um, or location load. <clears throat> um, this will be of type data flow. Um, okay, don't assume that it has location save or location load. So we have type data flow. Um, you're right, so because not all, and then so don't, don't go add these to each model yet. Uh, just um, implement for a test model. Um, and that could be something like, um, let's see, do we have a... Uh, let's see. I think we could just use maybe the SLR model. Actually, let's just... for uh, SLR model to test first. Um, okay. So let's add two more properties to model fig, check and make sure. Don't assume. Don't assume. Okay, so which is essentially, you know, has adder. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so don't assume the location of the saver location. Load exists within the config. Use has adder to check. They're of type data flow. Um, just implement for the SLR model. We'll add two other model configs in a separate or in next PR. All right. So we're implementing the data flow support. Um, we're testing it with the SLR model, and then we're making sure that it works for all the other models. Um, so. Okay, so yeah, and then um, let's um, let's um, take the data flows you have, the data flows you are creating 
and make them static. Um, statically defined um, somewhere. Uh, likely the archive. Uh, or let's see. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, let's make them statically defined somewhere. Um, so, okay, so yeah, because we could just static, so we will statically define these data flows, and then instead of adding the um, input path and output path in the seed values, we'll just add them when we're running. Um, so we'll add them uh, basically on the call to run here. We'll add those inputs. Um, let's see. Perhaps um, small size data flows. Um, okay. Um, we will take the seed inputs. Take the. Okay, so when we run the data flow, we can pass the input path and the output path. When we run, um, okay. Um, then you just pick the correct data flow and you, yeah, you just pick the correct data flow and you run it. You know, you can use the same if block to pick a static one. Um, let's see, so compression op. Okay, so let's see what's going on with compression op. All right, so get operations. So if compression op. All right, so you're adding, okay, so. Hmm, 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 hmm. So, hmm. yeah, okay, the question is, do you statically define it or do you keep it as the function because of the compression op? I forgot about this, yeah. Um, compress, decompress. I will try to write some pieces of code which like uh, behave like pieces of a puzzle so that we can like, shorten this part which is very large like currently this data flow part which is a lot of if else's and a lot of stuff yeah so it should be like very small okay so what what if what if what if you don't have like what if the archive doesn't exist already what happens here We already check uh, if it is a file or not. So if it is a file only, then if we end up in the situation. So what if you wanted to, so what if you didn't, okay, so, but what if it wasn't a file? So this is the first time you're using the model, right? Then. So next, yes, it should be like, a loop. It, it is a loophole, like. <laughs> okay, okay, so let's just make sure that that's supported, so. Um, Let's make sure that if this is the first time we're using a model, uh, then we create an archive of the saved state. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I guess... Let's see. So, yeah, that compression off stuff. I don't know. You might just want to move that... Instead of statically defining, you might want to just move this get operations thing into its own, like, yeah, move this into something else and then have it return the whole data flow. That might, you know, put it in another file or something, right? Like, yeah. the DFL, DFL, data flows are kind of... really, like, very satisfied with this, so... 
Yeah, well, you know, me, 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 me neither with the whole data flow thing. There is, we've talked about this many times before. There's got to be a less verbose way to define these data flows. Um, we just haven't invested any time into figuring out what it is yet. <laughs> so, so you're, you're, you've joined the boat. <laughs> we're all, we're all um, wishing there was a, a, a quicker way to define these. So, so for some time I was thinking like I was doing it in the wrong way, but like I cannot take out much of it. Yeah, there's not. It's it's it is pretty verbose. Yeah, um, and that's you know the shorthand command and stuff. Like all of, all of this stuff is like, well, how do you how do you how do we end up with something that's less verbose? We're we're not sure yet, right? Um, so yeah, you may you may you may uh, come up with some stuff as you do this. So let's see. So. Uh, Yeah, yeah, you may have. Hopefully, hopefully you can you can come up with some ideas here. All right, so let's take the data flows you're creating, um, and uh, and put the helper function to create down to find somewhere in. Okay. An output path. Okay, so let's take the data flows. Okay. So okay, and then this will raise the issue of okay, what's the data type of those? So all right, well we're always gonna define it as the same thing. So input path and output path. So okay. So yeah, so we'll move this stuff into the helper into its own file and then we can at least you know refactor it from there and not have to have it clutter up the model stuff um, and then we'll make sure that you can do it from something that doesn't exist um, so like the file doesn't exist yet um, and then okay and then we'll do the where did my comment go okay there it is um, and then, okay, and then, okay, da, da, da. we archive it, save it to the location, okay, so, and then I think, um, we need to make, uh, definitions for these, um, let's see, I'll oh, show with this. Okay. So, info path, output path. So, I think we probably need a way to also define. Um, hmm, this is going to be a thing. So, okay. Hmm, we're going to have to think about this. Okay, so what I'm realizing is, and this is something we'll have to deal with later, but this will probably be spun off of the shorthand stuff and all of the rest of everything. So um, we'll probably need to have a way, this will probably need to be, the way that we run the data flow will probably need to support all of the rest of the data flow running stuff. So for example, adding extra inputs um, or running it in a different orchestrator or things like that. Um, so we'll need to we'll need to figure out how to sort of piggyback off of the um, um, uh, for example, let's see from so I, So let's see what happens when we run a data flow. Um, run command config. So where's the one that doesn't involve sources? Run record set, run single. Okay, and that's for run context. Okay, so orchestrator inputs. Yeah, we'll need to be able to configure the orchestrator. We'll need to be able to configure the inputs. Okay, we'll have to think more on this, but we'll we'll implement the basic support for now. But I think that you know, sort of long term, we'll need something that's like, hmm, 
Hmm, maybe we'll just, we'll probably, okay, this will probably be a good thing when we, ah, okay, so when we unify, okay, perfect, okay. When we get all the config stuff unified, what we can do is we can take the run data flow command and the run data flow, or the run data flow operation. The run data flow operation could be the same as like the run single or run context from the command line and it'll have the config and then we can reuse the operation and we can reuse the config so that when you say location save it can actually be the config for a you know it can actually be this whole config type of thing and it just runs the um it 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 runs essentially the operation underneath it um using the configured the configured operation okay 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 we'll be fine we'll be fine i just wanted to think about that for a little second there okay so um okay so let's just okay so we need to make definitions for these so let's make sure let's just make sure that the the, the let's make sure that we always pass uh these to the data flow as some standard definition uh, name. So, uh, for example, maybe uh, like like yeah, model location and uh, model tempter or something like that. Um, and then we'll pry, then we'll try to make this all configurable when we get to a later stage. Um, but we'll just, you know, set the definition names as that. And then let's make sure that these data flows, um, you know, are updated, that you update the flow to grab from, uh, you know, model location or model tempter. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Definitely. Okay. All right. I think, are we good on this? Do you have enough um, to, to chew on here? Yes. All right. Great. Cool. Okay. So we talked about that. We talked about, okay. So the one thing that's left here is still, we got this um, scikit stuff is being annoying. Um, and okay. Oops. Let's see. Let's see, we've got, um, how do I do this? Uh, meet, okay. Um, let's see, why can't I? Okay, Q, U, M, M, E, T, T, A, O, H. All right, how do you? Let's see, okay, great. Um, man, why wouldn't it let you guys back in? What the hell? That's weird. It's your same account though, right? Yeah, yeah it's the same account. That's weird. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. So let's let's see. And I was gonna get some try to figure out some scheduling stuff so we could do a one on one Sutanchu. Um, so I'll get back to you on that. Um, so that's weird that it wouldn't let you guys in. So all right. So all right. Um, the one. What else does there, is there anything else we we must talk about today? Um, because uh, I think. We might try to wrap this. I have a few short questions that yeah. I want to make sure. Yeah, let's go for them. So, uh, 
is it okay to if i'm you know taking mean of all the predictions for multi output uh, of the accuracies of predictions ah uh, okay are you talking about for the confidence or what wait for for uh, oh for the accuracy um, oh on multi output oh yeah um yeah. hmm um hmm that's a good question <laughs> um because it was uh, a lot simpler in the before we got it merged because the multi output has its own scorer uh but now we are using our our scorers so we have to come up with something now okay so I mean, it seems like you might want to predict on each one using multi-output, and then you might want to score individually. Um, so, what 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 is the what would the current usage look like then? I guess. Um, so. So let's see. So. The score. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, the usage, uh, I think, remains the same. Uh, okay. The score. So the score is taken from model predict right now. I take it. Let me just. So MCTX predict. Okay, so it grabs from model predict. Okay. Hmm. So, all right. So this brings up an interesting question, though. Um, I think we may want to make the scores take a f feature to score, like the feature that they should care about. Because right now, grabbing into model predict. I mean, everything should be, you know, if we grab into model predict and then all of a sudden model predict supports arrays of features, then, yeah, okay, well, then we can just change that. But it seems like, hmm, yep. yeah, I've adjusted that in the PR. Yeah, I'm just thinking here. All right. So, what do you guys see? What I'm saying? I'm think. I think maybe we should, because model says predict, right? And then uh, the score just is going to infer that we want to grab whatever the model was predicting, right? But I think it might make sense to have the score take a config where it says, you know, the feature that you wanted to to do the score of, and then in this case we would say, you know, feature equals salary or like you know score some some something right the feature that we wanted to care about is salary and then this score knows about that right and then we uh, uh, because they're also going to grab another write, model yeah uh, I was thinking maybe Hashim can write his own score with the country with the uh, for multi output specifically yeah I don't know. See, I don't know because the thing is, like you said, well, what is it going to do when it sees all of the all of the features, right? You would really have to run it multiple times because you would want the score for you would want the accuracy for each feature, right? Mm. And in that case, in that case, then you have to implement custom logic within each score in the event that the model that you grab into has a list of predictions rather than a single prediction. So it probably makes more sense to just have the score have, you know, in the config declare what feature or like what, what predicted value you want it to um, you want it to score does that does that make sense or does does, does anybody think that doesn't make sense uh, so you mean in, 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 
case of I I can't hear you. You're breaking up. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, does that mean that uh, for the multi output use case, uh, we will essentially be calling the scorer multiple times for each of our targets? Yeah, I I believe so. I I think so. Um, so because this 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 um, example on the front page becomes so, and I don't know. Maybe this is where it's like okay. Uh, but usually, uh, what you really want is a single number telling you how your model is performing. Yeah, but yeah, so that's that's true. Although, so okay, so if you had. If you had, um, okay, so, okay, so, but the thing is, from the implementation of the score side of things, right, a score, what is it, what, it, what is the score going to do if it sees multiple um, predictions, right? So, in here, you would say, you know, so what does this classification accuracy do essentially if it, if it, I mean, I guess it would, it would iterate over. So the thing is, it would have to iterate over self.parent.config. Or it would have to iterate over yeah, I, the I predictions. Yeah, I implemented that uh, in the pull request I opened. Oh, yo, that's what that was. Um, okay, so. Oh, uh, you can you can just run the notebook maybe, or should I share this? Yeah, screen? well, I think I think I, I have to run. I have to run now. I'm I'm butting into my next meeting time here, so um, I I'm just thinking that yeah, okay. So there's something I guess there's something to be said for you know do the accuracy on all of the things that you predicted. Uh, yeah. Okay. So there's something we said to be for that, but you can't then combine a classification like a. If you had, can you do a multi-output of a classification, a classified feature, and a regressor feature at the same time, or is it only one or the other? Yeah, it's one or the other. Yeah, it would be one or the yeah because the underlying model. Yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. Okay, let me just take a look. Let's let's. I mean, whatever you've done, obviously, is working right now. So I need to. I didn't get a chance to read the notebook. So so let me just get back to you. Then it sounds like it sounds like that sure. that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Sure. Cool. All right. Um. So let's see. What else did we have? So basically, this stuff here. Um. The NumPy doc string args. It's mad about. Um. It's mad about this guy not having max of PR parameter not in doc string. So it was mad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Metrics. Okay. So it's mad parameter not in doc string. Let's see if we can just see this real quick here. Tail config numpy. Um, it's a param not in doc params. Not wrapped. And then yeah, multi class y true, y true.
Yeah, well, no, looks like there's no no, no uh, max FPR. So yeah, uh, that's weird. Um, all right, I don't know what to do with this yet. Um, but uh, you know, you could always uh, you could always um, you could always throw a, throw a try block on it or something. Um, so let's see. I would say yeah. So there's this numpy one, and then you could say. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to do with these right now. I would say if you can try to grab, you can, I would say install the psych, the DAL stuff, see if you can get it with it patched, see if you can grab, see if you can, um, see if you can, see if you can somehow create the parameters based off of the um, real psych hit version of things and you know if not don't spend a ton of time on this but but we'll see we'll just see what happens okay yep i'll all take right. a look great all right thanks everyone have a good one bye bye bye